Carl. Carl, if you don't mind introducing yourself and then um if you want to share your screen, you should be able to you should be able to do that. And looking forward to your presentation. I'm excited. I think you're muted, Carl. Okay, we see your screen, but you're still muted, Carl. All right, there we go. There. Awesome. Okay. All right. Feels like it's a... Uh... All right. Well, welcome. Thank you very much for everyone to for being here today. We're going to go through how to drive your business by focusing on leading KPIs. And um, this is one of the things that for me was a big aha moment in my life when I was like, ah, it's not just about the end result. And the the sad part about it was I had to actually become a CFO to figure that out. Um, you know, most of my life was just getting the results, the end numbers, yeah, I remember being with a publicly traded, I was a corporate controller for a publicly traded company. All I cared about was numbers, 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 what's the EPS, you know, and, and how do we help release to help make sure we're hitting the taking place. But moving forward, it turned into a whole different experience of, you know, that's not how you actually make more money um, by focusing lag indicators as because uh, what happens when you focus on lagging, lag indicators, they're already done. So um, going briefly a little bit more about uh, who I am. So 40 Strategy, first of all, our company is uh, called 40 Strategy because only, most organizations only spend about 2% of their time on strategy, which is about equivalent to 40 hours per year. So what we what we like to say is hire us for those 40 hours to help make sure you're doing strategic planning and execution the right way as a, to not doing it the right way. And there is not doing it the right way. The reality is 90% of organizations fail to get two thirds of their strategic objectives done, which is just bananas, which means that only the top 10% get basically do what they say they're going to do three years in advance. And, and so that's what we do. We help get people up to that level. And it's, it's a lot of fun getting through that. Um, I'm, I'm the CEO of 40 strategy host of the measure success podcast. And we've also, I've also personally managed seven different companies to three X plus growth uh, throughout my career. Um, 17 plus uh, years C-suite experience. Um, even though I don't have a ton of gray hair, I did just turn 50. Um, yay. And 90% uh, of our clients are for referral, even though it's starting to expand into what we're doing. And then um, author recently of Lost at Sea, you know, an entrepreneur's guide to strategy. It's a little bit different book than you typically read. It's more of a, um, a story, right, of, of yourself, if you've been in a business and how you walk through the aspects of getting through that and growing. So let's go and hit right into it. And so um, KPIs, let me make sure if I can get this changed now we're just going to go through as is because I, I just have the PDF version up in front here. So um, what's a lagging KPI? A lagging KPI is revenue, uh, gross margin. It's uh, net income, right? This is typically what people are thinking about. It's the end result and that's getting to your lagging KPI. But how you got to figure out is how you get to your lagging KPI. It's your leading KPIs, which are leading you to that outcome. So for example, if you're trying to get sales, this in revenue, you have to do a sale. To get a sale, you have to ship a product. You have to ship a service. Well, how do you then ship a product, ship a service? You have to manufacture it. You have to make it. You have to provide those. Well, you have to go before that. How are you actually getting a client, right? What type of actions you're doing on a consistent basis? So we want to know the difference between what's again the leading and lagging KPIs. The reality is most strategic plans have about 80% of their strategic, of their KPIs are lagging KPIs. We inverse it. So 80% of our KPIs are leading KPIs in the strategic plan rather than lagging. Because the why is when you're in more control of what's happening, you're more likely to have more success. This is one of the secrets of Amazon. Amazon totally focuses on leading KPIs. Another thing that they do is they have a chair that's an empty chair in the room and they go, what would the customer think about this? So those, those are some things that they do to help make sure that they've been more successful. So the good news, this isn't just Amazon proven, even though they're pretty good. Um, this is, there's research behind this. Harvard Business Review has showed that you're three times more likely to accomplish your end result when you focus on your leading in indicators as opposed to your, um, the outcome. You know, we were talking with some earlier and it's like, I remember being with a, uh, when I became a CFO and we had a very effective quarterly bonus program based on beating results. 
but somebody would come to you after the quarter and they're like, well, what happened? You know, did, did we make our money? It's like, we already know, we just have to calculate it. There's nothing more you could do at this point, right? There's an example of just chasing a lagging indicator. You can't do anything about it. What we can figure out is what can we do next quarter to help make that number better. So you may have heard of this. It, I'm, it, it's been out there a long time, but it's amazing how many people don't apply it, don't use it. It's called the Pareto Principle. And, and what the truth is, is about, this applies, by the way, to nearly everything. It's never exactly 80-20, but about 20% of your efforts get to 80% of your results, which means that 80% of what you're doing gets to 20% of your results. So part of the magic of focusing on the right KPIs is what? how do you keep on doing the most important things and how do you automate, eliminate, delegate the things at that 80%? Right. The more and more your efforts you can have to be strategic, the bigger and bigger are going to be your outcome or results. So, which leads us, of course, to what's our most important KPI. And so this is a fun little story. I'm gonna I'm gonna share with a actually it was a it was a school district. Um, and and they were based in Texas. And uh, it was a charter school. So for them, they actually had to attract students because if they didn't attract students and come to there, they weren't going to make literally revenue They because they were paid based on the number of students that come to a school. And so I asked them, of course, what's the most KPI? And I said, well, it's number of students. And I said, okay, that's your outcome. It makes sense, right? You need to get to that outcome. But I said, how do you know during the year you're actually improving that number? They said, well, we track the number of students again. I was talking to a CFO. I was like, okay, we well, let's, let's take this a step further. How do you know you're doing something to change the improvement towards it? And they- we're really scratching their head and they're like, well, we can track the number of applications. One of the key differences in leading and lagging indicators is at leading indicators, you have a significant level of control while a lagging indicator, you don't have any control. It's the outcome of what already happened. And so finally somebody goes, no, it's not applications because we don't really have control over that. And finally the superintendent says, you know, I think it's campus visits. I said, well, tell me about that. Tell me, tell me what a campus visit is like. We said, well, whenever a prospective student would come onto our campus, we would know whether or not, well, let me clarify this. We give them a great experience. First of all, we'd bring a great student and then help walk them through. And then they would sit in a class and hear one of our teachers speak. And then they, we'd walk them around to our athletic facilities and they get to feel the culture. They get to see the friendships that were in there. They could be a part of our culture. And then at the end of the tour, they would come up and they would shake my hand. And I would know at the end of that time, whether or not they were going to join and apply to our school and become a part of our community. So I asked them the question, are you tracking that campus tour? Now, what do you think their answer was? No, right? And that's the typical answer is typically people are not tracking their most important KPI. And what's interesting about that, so this brings us to, now you got to apply this to your own business. And the question is, what is your campus visit? You, the campus visit, or if you may, your most important leading indicator is how you end up converting things, is how you end up creating a business. It's that most important connection with your potential client often is that experience. So let's go back to the campus visit to help put this into perspective. The superintendent at the end of the discussion and re recognizing that they weren't tracking it, said something really interesting. He said, you know, I haven't been tracking lately because I've been too busy working on my PhD. I wonder what's happening now, right? Think about that. The most important KPI that they weren't tracking, he had no idea the status of it. He had no idea on the strategies of how they were attracting more people to do campus visits. Were they making sure they're bringing their best people to do the campus visits? Were they making sure they did a follow-up from the campus visit and send it out to them afterwards to make sure they're tracking? These are all strategies around the big leading KPI to make sure that they're going to get the greatest out impact and the outcome of bringing more people to their campus to be a part of their school. And so that's what I want you to think about today is what is your most important campus visit? What are the areas that we can do 
to help make sure we drive towards that. And that's what we work with a lot of our clients is discerning that process that we went through. Because when you do figure it out, that ends up becoming uh, from a Pareto principle, typically one of the most important things you, that you can help do to drive, increase your revenue, your profits, and ultimately, you know, uh, EBITDA, if you're depending on how you're being tracked, that's how it moves towards. Um, that is the, once again, we wanted to keep this short and sweet from a presentation standpoint and also open the opportunity for you to have some questions. Um, we'd love to get some feedback on this. And if you uh, be happy to, you could use your QR code and, and fill this out. We'll give you some more information. One of the things we're super excited about now is we have found what we believe to be the holy grail of strategies. So we do hundreds of strategies working with the clients, but we actually focus on the 40 most important with our clients that have the biggest bang for its buck. And we now have a tool which can actually validate which of those 40 are going to increase the value of your business the most. And what I mean by that is most companies are valued based on revenue times EBITDA to get to a, a, an out, outcome, right? Uh, that's the value of your company. Well, what's interesting is the the multiple is typically think, th thought of as a fixed amount, and that's not true. The multiple is just the industry average. When you de-risk your company, meaning make it more repeatable and effective and doing the right things through it, you actually increase the multiple. And it's one of the quickest, easy ways to actually increase the value of business. And this tool we have can actually validate how much money and return you'd get without even increasing your profits. And so it's a super tool. If you're interested in being a part of that, learning about that, let us know and we'll help um, give you that assessment. So thank you. And uh, I could leave it open to any questions here, Taylor. Awesome. Carl, thanks so much. That's fantastic. I'm glad we have some good time for Q&A. Um, I would propose that if you've got a question for Carl, throw it in the chat so that we can kind of have a line of questions there and we'll get to your questions in order. Um, I'll kick things off for a first question just because I get the mic first. Um, but Carl, what would you say the biggest stumbling block or hurdle is for people to identify their lead leading indicators? Like where do you see people get wrapped around the axle most? Um, and also I'd be interested as, as you're answering that, if everyone who's willing put your leading indicator or leading measure there in the chat and we can, we can have some discussion around that. But Carl, if you don't mind sharing what you've seen in terms of biggest mistakes or hurdles. The biggest mistake is they go back to their existing data. It's a little you know, ironic, right? You'd expect, oh, we just go back to the data and we're going to find out what's happening. But in this example of campus visits, they had no idea. They had no idea it was the most important part. And so I think it's important to step back and, and view how do we make money? How do we track clients to our business? And then through that process, how do we make money? And when you go back and you take that bigger picture, you can then go, oh, these are the things we are controlling that can get to a better outcome. Often that quote unquote campus visit is that first prospect experience. So the first time you're connecting with a potential prospect, how was that first experience and how did everything go before it and how did everything go after it? But that core event is often, but once again, even that is not always tracked in your CRM system. You'd be surprised, right? It's not like what they're tracking. And, and so, and what's another important thing is not to focus on vanity metrics. So um, it might be, for example, we're, we're going to care about how many likes we get on LinkedIn as an example, right? Or how many times I've ca called out somebody today. Was that really your most important thing? Did you have a real dialogue with someone that actually is going to create trust in the relationship that goes, so they're going to want to buy your product or service from you? So I think those few things, Taylor, are the things that I see the biggest stumbling blocks when people are trying to evaluate what their actual leading indicator is. Super helpful. Most important one, just to clarify. Yeah. Kevin, do you want to come off mute and ask your question? So um, my question is around 
people are ingrained. If you're dealing with CEO, a board, or even uh, your peer managers, and I'm coming from a finance perspective, they are so caught up with what happened last month, what happened with expenses, what happened with sales, what happened with revenue. What have you found to be effective to get their mindset to change and better understand that looking at the number of campus visits, the number of um, sales calls, whatever the, the leading indicators are, um, what have you found to be effective to get their mindsets to change to that? Kevin, it's a great question. We, you and I were talking beforehand, right? You were mentioning, hey, this is this is a, a consistent challenge, right? Of of making sure that where should our focus be? And interesting enough, I think comes down to is you have to change your focus and show how you're getting to the end result and how you're having impact. You, I think you gave an example of the day before the end of a quarter, and somebody's like, well, how can we help hit the numbers? It's like, well, you got a day away to help close your sales, right? And and so if you haven't closed the numbers yet, we're it's it's already done. It's too late. At best, it's going to be next quarter sales, right? As that example. And so that's part of the, the method behind this is not just showing the typical result. You've been a part of multiple, right, Kevin, in your role, board presentations and management meetings. And it's, and it's always EBITDA focused or revenue or you know net profit, whatever it is, right? It, but it's end results. You have to change it and you have to show how we got there. So you have to actually show the core process of when we do this and when we do this and when we do these key leading indicator, indicators, we're tracking to a better result. And so what you're tracking more is those conversions along your process to help accelerate. When you help people to realize that, and by the way, Kevin, I encourage you to not to just share it, but to help them come up with it, right? Help facilitate that process. That's what we do when we do our strategic planning is we help facilitate Hey, how can we help get there? So then they've bought into it. It's part of their idea, not just your idea as the CFO. And then they're much more likely to buy in and understand. But it is a significant change. It's not where people typically are focused. Thanks, Carl. Um, Fiona, do you want to share some more depth into your question? Yeah, so I was curious... Um, we're in really early stages. So we licensed our technology from an existing university program and we commercialized it in July. And so our, our technology has been in place for about five or six years, but we, we didn't commercialize it until recently. So most of our existing users and relationships are coming either from people who had trialed it previously or people who um, were referrals into our network. And so I'm curious, as you go about establishing your KPIs, if there are metrics that we should be looking out for, are there um, indicators to be looking out for? Because I don't know exactly what is going to be our biggest indicator yet. So if you had, let me ask you a question. What is your next biggest milestone that you need to hit to get to your point of success? So... I would say that it's probably to do at least 10 more sales so that we can bring in the revenue for some development that we want to incorporate. So that's your lagging indicator, right? Uh-huh. Okay. So what does it take to get a sale? Well, I'm still figuring that out in some ways, but I think it's for building relationships with individual instructors. Yeah. So- Obviously, you know, we don't have time to workshop everybody through this for, for purpose of this meeting. But what I just did there is part of that process is you want to go back and go, okay, I think you're, it's a hypothesis. And by mm -hmm. the way, and I think this is one of the things we talk about is strategic plan is a hypothesis. It's not a fact. Just like being in a university, it's a, we're trying to test and evaluate and understand what do we think? And once we get stronger correlation, it's rarely 100% correlation, but when we get stronger correlation, then we could decide, ah, that's the most important thing. So when it comes to, you said there, I think you said trying to get uh, 10 key contacts, right? Mm -hmm. Or you, you, sorry, 10 sales and you need to get better relationships. Focus on how to get those relationships and what conversation within those relationships do you need to get across? Mm-hmm. Okay. And then you could evaluate whether they understood that and went through the part, right? Through that process behind it. What's interesting is, um, thanks, Chad. Um, the, the, and by the way, uh, Chad, he just said, you know, uh, hypothesis, it's like, it, that's, it is right. It's, it's why strategic plans 
and fail and die so consistently is because people think you figured it out. And I'll do a little analogy later on. But, but Fiona, going back to you, literally, I, I like to, if you've heard the term value stream, map it. Meaning you literally walk through that process of what does it take to help get that key most important you need to talk with. You mentioned two things, referrals. That's, I think you mentioned one thing. And then another, I forget what you said. There's a number two, but you find out how you're getting to them to have that meaningful, most important conversation. And with them, what are the follow-up activities to get them to the point where they actually get a sale? And what you have to find is identify, well, which of these are going to have the most impact? And as you, if you saw on that earlier slide I had, sometimes there's multiple leading KPIs, right? Getting the outcome and just finding once again, what's the, what's the most important one that's that's having the biggest impact going back to the Pareto principle. What you want to be careful with is not worrying. It's often not the little things. It's, it's, it's the, it's actually right in front of you is often the most important thing. It's the thing you'd almost take for granted is what's creating the value. And, and so when you get to that, but you have to start tracking it, right? You have to start tracking those connections, those relationships, and that's going to help you ultimately get your answer, but keep the end in mind how to get there, start tracking it. And by the way, don't be too, just put it on Excel or whiteboard if you need to begin with, right? Don't, don't get too caught up in the details initially. And when it becomes a system, then you can start putting into something to track more frequently. But you have to have this be top of mind for everybody's involved and figure out within your team what you need to do and how to get there. Thank you. That's awesome. Jason, do you want to come off mute and dive into your question a little bit more? Sure. Thanks, Carl. Yeah, I'd just love to get your take on Net Promoter Score, how you look at it, if you use it as a leading indicator for you. Dave, let me ask you a question. Do you think Net Promoter Score is a leading or a lagging ind indicator? Well, I got an opinion, but I'd love to get your take on it. I, I mean, I think it's a leading, but, and I've heard other people say it's leading, but I'd like to get, you know, your thoughts on it. Typically, a net promoter score, for those who aren't familiar with it, it's it's when you get a survey, when you put a nine or 10 on, on a score, that's a plus one. If you put a seven or eight, that's a zero. And if you put a um, six or less, you get a negative one. And so the best score is plus 100. The worst score is minus 100. And then the average US company, I think, is negative. Um, a good company is about 15 to 20. And a great company like Google gets a 60 to 65. You know, like they're, they're way up there. So Jason, I know you're familiar with that, but but when you think about it, what you're really trying to get people to say is, would somebody be willing to, to refer your product or service? Well, the only way they're going to be able to refer your product or service is if they used it. So in my opinion, NPS is a lagging score. How you have to figure out is how to get people to that experience. So it's great to have a great NPS, but it's the end result. It's how they feel about you. Now, if you could turn that into them referring to you in reality, that is great. But are they? Somebody could give you a nine and 10 and never refer you. They're just saying it. So to me, a more valuable net NPS score is to go, hey, which of these people who have actually said they're going to refer have actually referred us and given us a client? Right. Because often it's a very, it's a smaller group than the people who actually said nine and 10. It's way smaller than that actively capturing that group of people, meaning actually your, your, your chief referrers to, to give you more business, that is a value. But the score itself, in my opinion, is a lagging indicator that's actually putting a lot of companies astray because you and I both know the push to get, when they're doing surveys, will you please give me a nine or 10, is skewing the scores. What really matters is did they refer somebody to your product or service? That's the value point. Cool. Thanks. So Carl, is there an element of, I'm trying to distinguish between those because Jason, I think you're, I'm interested in, in digging in a little bit deeper on that with the NPS. It seems like what you're saying, Carl, is that the leading indicators are, are maybe more action oriented and the lagging are more of like a score or a number that you can point to. Like, and one of the examples I was always taught was like a lag measure is when you step on the scale and you see your weight and the leading indicators or the lead measures are uh, K 
calories expended and calories ingested. Basically, those are the things that you can control. But when you step on the scale, whether it's an NPS or my weight on that scale, I can't change it at that time. Yeah, uh, Taylor, and I'm going to do a throw in a, a little wrench into what you said there because you did. So, so let's say, for example, you're trying to lose weight in 30 days. And so you you nailed it right. Your leading indicators are what actions you're doing, i.e. food intake, the right type of food, right? And then exercise, right? So basically compare to your body, right? Th those are the things that you're doing that should be, that you can manage. Those are your leading indicators and tracking that. What's interesting is the only weight that technically matters is the lagging indicator at the end of the 30 days. But you should also be tracking your weight along the way because that's a trailing, that's like an indicator whether you're getting on target to reach towards it. So there's, it's still, it's lagging in nature, but by you stepping along the scale along the way, it becomes the Hawthorne effect for those who are familiar with that concept. And the Hawthorne effect is once you start measuring something, it matters. So when you, and, and, and there typically is an improvement on the measurement just by tracking it, which is crazy. Right. It's just literally listed people. That's the Hawthorne effect. When you see a number, you start going, Hey, we need to get better at this. And so that's the value of going on a weight each day along the way, even though the act itself is, is helping you out. But the real way you're losing weight is not by the act. That's part of it. It's by doing, once again, what you said is the, so it's the actionable. It's once again, the things you can control are the leading indicators, not just the outcome. Once again, I typically view a net promoter score as a lagging indicator. Interesting. Awesome. Parker, do you want to unmute yourself and dive into your question? Sure. Yeah. Thanks so much for the um, presentation. I was just wondering, I'm trying to wrap my head around um, more about around the lead and lag measures. And I was thinking for um, what I'm working on, the the obvious um, like lag measure would be an increase in sales, like closing sales deals. So then my head goes to, okay, how do we close those deals? And one of the key things is having like a product demo with people, um, which can happen through different ways. Sometimes we do webinars or conferences or things like that. But then I, I'm trying to think is, is um, the demo uh, uh, lead measure or are the activities that lead to the demo, like attending conferences and things, would that be the lead measure and then demo set be the lag measure? Does that make sense? So um, what's interesting is sometimes a leading measure can act like a lag, lagging measure as well. And so that's where sometimes, but in, in that example, I would argue those all were leading KPIs to get your result of a sale, right? You might find that the demo, product demo is the most important KPI, right? That's the highest and most important thing, but you have to get people to there, right? So there might be a leading indicator to the product demo, and then you have the product demo conversion, right? To actually getting to a sale. So measuring those processes around there, every anytime what's controllable or leading, right? And when it's the outcome, it's it's the end deal. And so what you're, Parker, that description you're going through and what you'll find once again is once you get to that part where it's like, ah, we figured this out. And then if you have a bigger team, it depends how big you are, Parker, but you could start then also evaluating your different people on the team and what's having better conversion rates. And this is when you can start really learning. What is Johnny doing this street that's not working as well as Sally? You know, sorry, down the hallway. And, and how do we help make sure we're learning from what Sally's doing, right? It's her techniques or practices to help make sure that that product demo is more effective. So we're getting them to conversion. So they're actually interested in taking a look again, taking the next step, right? And process that. Because there are times along the process where it may die, Right. It does, right? You know, not everybody's, you're never going to have a 100% funnel, right? I've never seen that ever in my life, right? Oh, every single person who goes to a product demo and they buy a product, that doesn't happen. But how do we help keep it so we have the highest conversion rates along the way and learning from that? That's so important This as far as continuously learning what's working. And don't assume, I'm a numbers guy. Don't assume the numbers are fully right understand them, right? To to saying what's going to have help get the greatest conversions through that process. So hopefully, Parker, that help out with your understanding there? Yeah, that did. Thank you. You bet. Awesome. Uh, Carl, this has been fantastic. We're about a minute away from our typical time ending. Um, 
Before we go, though, I would love to get any parting wisdom from you on what the um, what could everybody on this call do as soon as we hang up? Uh, what would you suggest the first action item be to implement some of these things that you've been talking about? I think it's to go go back and and have that what's your campus tour go back to your own business product service whatever you do whatever you're providing and ask yourself what can I do better and control to have a bigger impact in the outcome and what I, how do, one of the ways to do this Taylor is literally try to map it out map out the things that, that you're control of to get to the end result of a sale if that's your most important lagging your lagging KPI. And track through that and go, what things are doing. And once again, don't presume you're tracking it today, right? Look at, literally go on a whiteboard, I would recommend, or something like tool like that, where it, you have a free flow state to evaluate and then start measuring from that point forward. So you can start learning what's having the biggest impact for you. Awesome. Um, thank you. If people need help mapping out uh, that, can they reach out to you and how can they get a hold of you and, and engage with you? Yeah, if um, if I could share my screen again. Um, sorry, I'll go back to, forgive me here. So um, feel welcome to use this QR code. Uh, once again, that's sitting here. Uh, hopefully that'll work through. We'd love to get your feedback on this presentation. I hope this has been helpful for you. Uh, this is one of the things we love to do and um, love to get your feedback. And then if you want to have follow-up questions, uh, that's number one, we can help you. And then also if you just want to use old school um, email, um, that's my email, carljcox at 40strategy.com. Our website is 40strategy.com. And if you, did, if you don't want to talk to me yet, that's fine. Um, you can listen to our podcast, uh, check us out stuff on, on LinkedIn. Uh, we have a lot of content that we're c consistently sharing about what we learn and how we're trying to help organizations make a difference. Awesome. Carl, thanks so much. This has been amazing. Had some great questions. Thanks everybody for coming and we'll see you all next week. Same time. Thanks, Carl. Thank you.